Hey everybody, I'm Chris. And I'm David. And we're with the DiceyReview.com. Tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the three to seven player game from Stronghold Games, Dark Moon. For setup, you'll place the game board in the center of the table. Then, take two of your shield markers and place them on the gauge here. Place the remaining four shield markers next to the board. Then, we randomly draw and place two outpost tokens, matching the symbols. Now, place the remaining outpost tokens face down in a stack next to the board. Next, you'll place the fatigue tokens in a pile next to the board. Place the sabotage, quarantine, and die tokens in a stack next to the board. Now, you'll place one red suspicion cube at the beginning of the vote track. Then, place a single blue and black cube above the difficulty track. The remaining blue cubes are placed in a pile next to the board. Next, shuffle the character cards and deal one face up to each player. Give each player the uninfected player screen that matches their character card. Next, give each player two black strong dice and two red weak dice. Give each player a participation token. Randomly draw a fatigue token until you find one that matches one of the characters in play. That character will be the commander. They receive the commander card and the blue die. Next, randomly draw a final event card and place it face up in the camera four spot. Place the remaining final event cards back in the box. They won't be used for the rest of the game. Form your status deck by randomly selecting the number of infected status cards you need for your player count and the number of uninfected status cards that you need. Once you've formed your deck, shuffle them and randomly deal one to each player face down. In a four-player game, there will be one infected and three uninfected players. The number of infected and uninfected players will vary based on the player count. There are two different types of task decks. In our four-player game, we'll use the black task deck. Shuffle it and place it next to the board. Shuffle the event deck and place it next to the board. Finally, the commander chooses two event cards. They place one face up on camera one, one face down at the bottom of the deck. The player to the left of the commander goes first, and then play proceeds clockwise. It's important to note that only the commander will see these two event cards and choose which one goes into play and which one goes on the bottom of the event deck. In Dark Moon, there are two ways to win. If you're infected, you can win by damaging any one of the major systems of the ship beyond repair. Taking out the shields, damaging the outpost beyond any hope of repair, or destroying the life support system so that all uninfected players succumb to fatigue, if any of these conditions are met, the infected team instantly wins. The uninfected team wins if they survive to the end of the game, which constitutes completing three events and a fourth final event. In clockwise order, players will take turns. Each turn consists of four steps. There may be more steps, but they're conditional. The first step is retrieving your dice. The die limit is displayed on the front of the player card. This step is skipped in the beginning of the game, but in later turns, players will retrieve dice up to their dice limit from the available resources space. Players then have the ability to take an action. The actions that can be taken are determined by the outpost statuses. In this example, the life support outpost and the communications outpost have been damaged. So life support can't be repaired and orders can't be issued. We will explain those steps just to give you an example. During your turn, you can take one of five actions. Those actions are repair, which would include repairing shields, outposts, or life support. You could also call a vote, take a lone wolf action, issue an order, or reveal as infected. Now we'll discuss all of the actions in more detail. The first type of action you can take is repair. There are three types of repair, shield control, outpost status, and life support. Regardless of a player's dice total, they can roll up to three dice. If they submit a positive die, the repair is successful. If they submit a negative die, the repair fails. If your shield has started to fail, you can attempt a repair of the shield control. If you succeed, you can remove the token that's farthest on the track. 
The next type of repair is life support. For this example, we've placed a few fatigue tokens in the life support area to show you what a repair would look like. Once again, a player can roll up to three dice and submit one to see if the repair succeeds or fails. If a positive die is submitted, the repair succeeds. If a negative die is submitted, the repair fails. Once the repair is successful, one of the fatigue tokens can be removed from the life support area. Once a player's token has been removed from the life support area, that player is no longer fatigued, and a player does not have to declare which token they intend to remove before they attempt a life support repair. The last type of repair is the outpost status. Like the other repairs, a player can roll up to three dice. If they submit a positive die, the repair is successful. If they submit a negative die, the repair fails. If the repair is successful, a player can remove any one of the tokens, which allows that action to be taken. You then shuffle the token back into the stack. Repairing the outpost is the only action that's always available to players, no matter which stations have been damaged. The next action a player could take on their turn would be to call a vote. A vote can be called to quarantine a player or to release a player from quarantine. A player may also call a vote on themselves. Once a vote has been called, all players will extend a closed fist and simultaneously reveal what they have in their hand. A black strong die is a vote that the player is not infected and should not be in quarantine. A red weak die is a vote that the player is infected and should be in quarantine. A commander die can never be used. Players can also abstain by holding out an empty hand. Players may be forced to abstain if they don't have active die or they don't have an active die in the color they would like to vote with. If the majority of players vote that a player is infected, that player is placed in quarantine or remains in quarantine. If the majority vote that the player is not infected, that player is either released from quarantine or stays out of quarantine. In the case of a tie, the commander makes the decision. We'll talk more about quarantine later. After the vote is complete, the players will place the die behind their player screen with the remaining active dice. The active player may become a lone wolf and attempt to add an event cube to the current active event all by themselves. That player rolls up to three dice and submits two. If both submitted dice are positive, the action succeeds and an event cube is added to the current active event. This may complete the event, in which case the commander immediately draws two new event cards and chooses one before the active player's turn continues. If successfully performing this action causes the final event to be completed, the uninfected team immediately wins the game. Another action a player may take on their turn is to issue an order. When a player issues an order to another player, the player who receives the order is under no obligation to follow the order. Once a player receives an order, they may either retrieve two dice from the available resources spot on the board, or they can take two actions. One of those actions cannot be to issue an order. It's important to note that once a player has received an order, their first action could be to reveal as infected, in which case they would immediately get to take an infected action. So give orders carefully. We'll talk more about infected actions later. It's also important to remember that once a player has received an order, they cannot use their special ability at that time since they are not currently the active player. A player can also reveal as infected, and several things happen when you reveal as infected. We'll go into more detail on this later. After taking actions, the current player will draw two task cards. Placing one face up, on the current task space, and one face down on the discard space. If there are no cards left to draw, shuffle the discard pile and reform the task deck. The fourth step of a player's turn is resolving the task card. There are two types of task cards, malfunctions and complications. If the task is a malfunction, the players will place the blue challenge cube on the correct spot as indicated by the card, and then we'll place the black cube on zero. Beginning with the active player, the player who chose the task, each player will decide whether they are in or out. In clockwise order, they will flip their token to the appropriate side. If a player is out on a task, they can immediately retrieve up to two dice from the available resources spot on the board as long as they don't exceed their die limit. If a player is in, they can immediately roll all of their dice and they have to submit at least one die to the total. 
They can submit more, but one is required. Players who are in, roll and submit dice in turn order. Players may not roll their dice ahead of time to see what the results are going to be. Once a player has rolled and submitted at least one die, they can roll again, but be aware that every time you roll, you have to submit at least one die. So a roll of all negatives would force you to submit negative dice into the task. When die are submitted, the black cube is moved either up or down in the direction indicated by the die. This die would move the black cube up three spaces. This die would move the black cube down two spaces. When dice are submitted to the task, they're placed in the spent resources section of the board. After the task is resolved, but before the consequences take place, all of these dice will be moved back into the available resources space on the board. Once all players who chose in for the task, be they infected or not, have submitted at least one die, then the task is considered complete. If the black cube meets or exceeds the spot of the blue cube on the board, the task is completed successfully. If the black cube is below the spot of the blue cube on the board, the task fails. There are four different types of complications. Some specifically damage shields, some specifically damage outpost statuses, and some specifically damage life support. The fourth type is a wild card, and the player who resolves the task can choose which section gets damaged. As we stated before, the type of damage that the board would take would be indicated by the icon in the top right corner of the card. This card has no icon and it's wild damage. The damage taken is indicated by the red text. So in this example, the outpost status would take two damage tiles. These would be drawn randomly and placed on their subjective spots. If the sixth and final outpost token is placed, the infected players immediately win. As we stated earlier, each one of these tokens restricts players from taking a certain action. The action that's restricted is mentioned on the token. If the malfunction happened in life support, it means the environmental conditions have deteriorated, resulting in one or more crew members becoming fatigued. Draw a number of fatigue tokens equal to the consequence number on the card and place them on the life support section of the board. Place the tokens face up. And if any of the characters on the tokens are in play, those characters then become fatigued. We'll talk a little bit more about fatigue later. If at any point the sixth and final space is covered, the infected team immediately wins. The last type of malfunction is shield damage. In the case of a shield malfunction, you place a number of tokens equal to the consequence number on the task card. If at any point a shield malfunction occurs, the next visible space is a check that must be passed. These checks require a die roll. Some require a specific die roll to come up for the failure to happen. In this example, if you rolled a negative one, you would fail the test. In this example, any positive die roll would fail the test. This would be a negative two, and this would be any negative die roll. For these checks, any die can be rolled. If there are no available dice on the board, a player may roll one of their own dice, but it does not get submitted. If you fail the shield test, then the player who rolled the die must immediately either draw an outpost token or a fatigue token. Just like the other areas of damage, if the sixth and final shield token is ever placed on the board, the infected team immediately wins. The final type of malfunction, the card showing question marks, lets the player choose which area of the ship they would like to be damaged. They have to make the choice before players decide whether they're in or out and before they roll their dice. The other type of task card are complications. These cards allow the players to make a choice. The player can decide between two different outcomes. Each complication card is different. The card explains what choice the player has to make. The outcome will be different based on which complication card you're reading. Both malfunctions and complications can have the potential for suspicious activity. If the task card says suspicious activity, the red cube is moved up one space on the suspicion track. If at any point the cube is moved to the final square on the suspicion track, a vote must be called. The cube is moved regardless of whether or not the task was completed successfully or failed. The active player will call a vote. They can call a vote on any player, including themselves or a player that's already in quarantine. 
Once the vote is completed, play will continue in clockwise order, and the cube will be moved back to the first square of the suspicion track. If the task was successful, add an event cube on the next available empty slot of the current active event. When the final empty spot is filled with an event cube, the event is completed. Resolve any text if applicable. If the completed event is the final event, then the uninfected team immediately wins. Once an event is completed, the commander immediately draws two new event cards, chooses one, places it face up in the next camera spot available, and places the other one face down in the discard pile. If a player is voted into quarantine, place the quarantine token on the player's mat. This reduces the player's die count by two. If a player has more active die than two at that point, they have to discard down to their dice limit. They can choose which dice to discard. On a quarantine player's turn, they will retrieve dice up to their dice limit as normal, but their actions are limited. The only actions available to a quarantine player are calling a vote, revealing as infected, or giving an order. If calling a vote and giving an order are blocked due to outpost damage and the player is not infected, they have no actions available to them on their turn. Even if a player's die limit is reduced to zero, a player will still have access to one die. Quarantine players also don't draw task cards at the end of their turn. If the commander is quarantined, then the commander card will pass to the player who called the vote. If that player is also quarantined, then the card goes to the next player to the left that is not in quarantine. If a character's fatigue token is drawn, you turn over their character card, losing their special ability. In addition, they can only submit one die during a malfunction. If a character's fatigue token is removed due to a successful life support repair, turn their character card back over, gaining access to their special ability again. Once a character's fatigue token is removed, they can again submit multiple dice for a malfunction. When a character reveals themselves as infected, a number of things happen. First, if the player is not quarantined, then they execute the text on their infection card. In this example, they would draw one shield, place it on the board, and then test the shields. Next, the player would roll any available die. If the number is positive, then they can execute their infection power again. If it's negative, they may not. Next, the player discards their player card, any die tokens they might have accumulated, and their quarantine token if they were quarantined. They would also discard their uninfected player screen. They would then replace it with an infected player screen. If the commander was the player that revealed as infected, the commander card passes to the next player to the left, and the commander die is placed into the available resources pool. Players now follow their new die limit of two dice and discard any dice that they have more than two back to the available resources pool. At this point, the player's turn would be over unless their revealing as infected was the direct result of following an order. In that case, they would have a chance to take another infected action after revealing as infected. Players who have openly declared for the infected team choose whether they are in or out during malfunction tasks and submit dice as normal. Passing during a malfunction task still lets the infected player take up to two dice from the available dice pool. They no longer draw task cards at the end of their turn. They are no longer allowed to participate in votes. They cannot be voted on, be quarantined, or become fatigued. They are not affected by the command post token. They no longer have access to the normal actions. Instead, they gain access to the following five new actions. The first action available to an infected player is interference. Draw three task cards, discard as many as you want, and return the remaining cards to the top of the task deck in any order you choose. The next action available to an infected player is energy spike. If there are zero to one shield tokens on the board, add one shield token, and if applicable, test the shields. If there are two or more shield tokens on the board, roll any die to test the shields. Check the result against the current failure condition. If it matches, draw either a fatigue or outpost token and place it on the board. The third action that an infected player can take is sabotage. This will allow the infected player to place the sabotage token above the shield control, the outpost status, or the life support area of the board. 
When a player is attempting to make a repair of a sabotaged area, they must pay one die as normal for the repair and then discard up to two dice to get rid of the sabotage token. If a player does not have two dice, they must discard as many dice as they can. Once the dice are discarded, the sabotage token is removed, and that location can be repaired as normal. The infected player can take the sabotage action to move the sabotage marker from one area to another, but there can only ever be one sabotage location of the ship. The next action available to an infected player is Test Commander. The commander must roll all of their active dice and submit one. If positive, the commander is successful and nothing happens. If negative, the commander fails and the infected player may draw a damage token of their choice. If the commander has no active dice, it's an automatic failure. The final action an infected player can take is to demoralize. When an infected player takes the demoralize action, all players, beginning with the first to the infected player's left, must replace all of their active black strong dice with weak red dice until there are no more weak dice in the available resource pool. That concludes our walkthrough of Dark Moon. We really encourage you guys to get this game on the table and try it out for yourself. If you'd like to watch more of our videos, please check out our YouTube channel, The Dicey Review. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Dicey Review. Also check out our guild at BoardGameGeek.com. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you at the table.